Today, let's take a few minutes to talk about what I have personally found to be the best focus mode for the Nikon Z9 and the Z8. With the introduction of the mirrorless systems, a whole new era of autofocus came into being, and they are quite good. In the past, on DSLRs, it was a single focus point, and whatever's closest to the camera under that focus point is what it would focus on. You tried to line that right up on the eye and get a best shot as you could. With the new autofocus systems, and we'll take a look at an example here, there is the small area, the wide area modes that come with face detection or subject detection and can really snap onto the eye. But they're quite large and in groups, it's difficult to narrow down who you want to be the one that's gonna be in focus. So I've discovered that for one, you can use 3D tracking to get a single point and put that onto your thing, onto your person, but it uses a lot of battery. It's trying to decide whether something is moving through the screen when it doesn't really have to. So what we've, what I've done is create a single point focus mode using C1 that allows you to put the the focus point anywhere on the face and it'll snap to the eye. So let's take a look at how that's done. Let's take a quick look at where you can turn these on. In the menu, um, the custom settings menu, which is the pencil icon on the left, go into the A menu for focus and then go over to A8, limit AF area selection mode. In this menu, you can see that we can turn on and or off the different area modes for selection. At the top we have the dynamic modes which is a holdover from the DSL area and at the bottom we have the new wide area modes as well as 3D tracking. To see these options while taking an image select the I button on the back of your Z9 or Z8. This brings up the option to select your AF area mode. I find this menu to be a little bit misleading because as you can see here, we have the single point, small dynamic area mode, the medium dynamic area mode, and large dynamic area mode. And these four do not allow you to do AF subject selection or detection. But the menu is down there and you can still kind of set it. But when you are looking in the viewfinder, you will not see those. And here, I'll show you what that looks like in the viewfinder. All right, let's look at um, what it looks like in the viewfinder or on the back of the LCD screen when you have a single point selected but no subject detection and again you can set the subject detection if you want but it's not going to show up and you can see that by the missing icon here in contrast the wide area modes with a subject detection on you'll see the person icon or pet car bird whichever you have selected while this might be a bit nitpicky of me i personally feel like if you select an af mode that doesn't allow for subject detection, then this box on the bottom should simply just be grayed out. To add to the confusion, removing the checkbox in the A8 menu does not remove them from the I menu. However, it does remove it from the focus menu button on the front of the camera. So if you use that one, then it will make the adjustment. I personally almost never use that one, but to each their own. All right, so let's look at the autofocus area modes that are available in the Nikon Z9 and Z8. And those are wide small, wide large, wide custom one, wide custom two, 3D tracking, and auto. Auto is something I never use. It basically takes everything out of your hands and lets the camera decide where focus is gonna be. You can move around the joystick, but it's a lot of work to try to get it on the right person if you want, so I don't use that one. All right, let's get the big one out of the way first. And that would be auto focus area mode, which is the whole sensor suite. And we're gonna put it in subject detection here. This will give us the opportunity to see how the autofocus works. And this is true across all of these different modes. So let's get into it. Now in this mode, auto, we're allowing the camera sensor to find all the faces and all the eyes on those subjects, in this case, people, and highlight them. Now, in this particular case, I am not holding the back focus button or 
um, just it just sees what's there, kind of like an iPhone does. And it will put white boxes to indicate eyes, and then you can arrow left or arrow right to find different eyes. The larger gray boxes are going to be faces that it also sees, and you can move around and around. Now, as soon as you press this focus button down and hold it, the box will yellow, indicating locked focus, in case an eye, and will stay there. You can recompose and it will stay on that eye. Again, I want to point out this is true for all the wide area focus modes, with the exception or caveat that the focused point, in this case, the yellow box around the eye, must remain inside the focus area. Now, in this particular case, it's fine because it's the whole sensor system. And so as long as that person's face stays in the screen somewhere, it's going to stay on them. When you use smaller focus modes, you'll see how it bounces off. I have C1 set to a 1x1 one one grid and C2 set to a 1x3 grid vertical. I find that these two allow me to capture focus on an individual person quite easily. But if you can see, as soon as the focus box falls off of the face, it loses its ability to focus on that face. There are pros and cons to this method. A pro being that you can very easily pick a single subject and focus on them. A con is it's really hard to recompose the shot once you have your person selected unless you move the focusing point. The same caveat is true for the wide small and the wide large area modes. The only difference being is that the area in which the eye can stay focused will be limited to the bounds of the box. And this will typically be true as long as some part of the bounding box is on the face. Okay, well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, I think the best thing to do is to go out and try to use these different area modes. I personally quite enjoy the one by one with face detection under C1 and the one by three under C2. The one by one, I can find that I can put it on a, in a, on a single subject in a, in a party or at a group and capture their eye nice and clean, sharp, quick and easy. Whereas the larger modes can kind of get confused and it takes too much time for me to joystick left or right to kind of get the person and or eye that I want. The one by three vertical I find to be very effective for swimming. My son is a swimmer and as he comes out of the water, it's hard to judge where exactly in that vertical line he's going to be coming up and if I use a one by three it gives me a long area to check with that the focus will try to grab his eye. All right well I hope you have fun uh, playing with the new focus systems. If you have a question about something I might have missed in this please put it in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get a hold of that and answer there or in a video and uh, please give us a like and a thumbs up if you have a chance. Thanks.